This video is about the heart bar shoe and its impact on the distribution of pressure, the orientation of the distal bones and the process of placing the hoof. The data presented here were raised by a scientific cooperation between Verkman and the Institute of Veterinary Anatomy Leipzig. The heart bar shoe is a modification regarding the dorsopalmar level. It is a bar shoe with a welded in bar offering palmar support. The bar covered about two thirds to three quarters of the frog which places it inside the silhouette of the hoof. This increases the supporting surface in the posterior part of the hoof. Depending on the application, the bar can be positioned so that it either does or does not touch the frog. In this case, the frog touched the bar according to the hoof conformation, but without the need of additional padding. The manufacturing of a heart bar shoe is demonstrated by Mitch Taylor in the corresponding video. The heart bar shoe is a therapeutic shoe which is applied to support and protect the palmar part of the hoof. It is used in inflammations of the deep digital flexor tendon and illnesses of its accessory ligament. Additional indications are painful processes in the palmar part of the hoof like chronic inflammation of the podotrochlea and desmopathies of the short digital ligaments, keeping in mind that in these cases there should be no direct pressure on the frog. Apart from that, the shoe is used in order to restrict the hoof mechanism and to immobilise fractures and horn fissures as well. Furthermore, the heart bar shoe with padding underneath the frog region is used for the therapy of chronic laminitis because the additional pressure on the palmar part of the hoof provides relief of the painful region underneath the tip of the rotated or descended coffin bone. Moreover, the steeper orientation of the hoof on soft ground, which is discussed later on in the e-lecture, decreases the tension of the deep digital flexor tendon on the coughing bone. With regard to the biomechanic effects of this orthopedical shoe, we first discuss the impact on the orientation of the digital bones. The radiological examinations of the toe were carried out with a digital system by Geert X-ray International and a wireless detector by Canon. For the examination, the horse was placed so that both forelegs stood parallelly on even ground in the most natural position achievable. As measurements were supposed to be taken in the radiographs, we used a special X-ray block by Eponatech. In order to evaluate the shoe's effects on different grounds, we modified the X-ray block so that either a wooden board or a silicon pad plus sand could be attached to the upper side. When taking standardised radiographs, it is essential to introduce a permanent and correct mark on which the X-ray beam can be centred. The central ray aimed at the solar margin. The dorsopalmar alignment of the coffin bone is heavily influenced by a heart bar shoe. The barefoot situation, as well as the usage of standard horseshoes, serve as a comparison. Every radiograph examination was carried out on a firm wooden block and a block with soft padding. Usage of the firm x-ray block shows no difference between unshod, standard shoe and heart bar shoe, as only the surface is modified. However, if sinking into the ground is possible, we discover that the palmar angle of the coffin bone increases compared to barefoot or standard shoe. The tiptoe sinks in deeper, while the posterior part of the hoof can't sink into the ground as much because of the palmar support. Therefore, the coffin bone's angle is steeper in relation to firm ground, as well as in comparison to a standard shoe on soft ground. This relieves the deep digital flexor tendon and the podotrochlear apparatus on soft ground. When taking the mediolateral orientation of the coffin bone into account, we see that a heart bar shoe has no influence on firm ground. On soft ground, there are generally differences between the mediolateral alignment of the hoof. On soft ground, the, according to body conformation, heavily loaded part of the hoof can sink in, causing the angle of the coffin bone in relation to the ground to change. This effect is often intensified in hoof shoe modifications that prevent the hoof from sinking into the ground in that area by a palmar support. The important toe to support ratio is not influenced by the heart bar shoe on firm ground. Introducing palmar support within the hoof silhouette enlarges the area carrying weight, 
in this case by about 10 cm squared, without an additional enlargement of the palm or lever arm. In comparison to an egg bar shoe, with the bar extending as far as the balls, this causes less strain on the tendons and ligaments during unrollment. It is interesting to see, however, how the leverage forces influence the orientation of the hoof on soft ground. From putting the rotational centre in relation to the point of breakover and the branch's tips results in the anterior lever arm over which the horse has to unroll and the posterior lever arm. The ratio of anterior to posterior lever arm determines the tension of the deep digital flexor tendon. By using a heart bar shoe, we see that as the hoof's orientation is steeper and the anterior lever arm is shortened, this changes the course of the deep digital flexor tendon, causing less strain on soft ground even when the horse isn't moving. Apart from that, this structure is stressed less during unrollment because of the reduction of the anterior lever arm. In conclusion, the heart bar shoe has significant influence on the dynamics and biomechanics of the course of motion. Every horseshoe influences the way pressure forces are distributed across the hoof capsule apart from their effects on bones, tendons and ligaments. Here we demonstrate what kind of ground reaction forces develop between shoe and ground and how they are relayed to the hoof capsule. For this purpose, two pressure sensors by Megascan were simultaneously fixed to the hoof. Both forelimbs were shod and the left one used for measurements in each case. Five horses were available and the barefoot situation, as well as a standard shoe, served as reference. All the measurements were carried out on a straight trail, consisting of concrete, a rubber mat and firm and deep sand, because the effect of different shoes is very much dependent on the condition of the ground. First we look at those pressure forces which develop between shoe and firm ground during walking. A standard shoe without a rolled toe and two toe caps is compared to the heart bar shoe. The standard shoe creates a typical picture with a homogeneous supporting surface and pressure peaks in the toe area. The pressure distribution pattern of a heart bar shoe differs from this situation. While there are no discernible differences in the toe and branch areas when compared to a standard shoe, the shoe's bar is clearly visible in the posterior part of the hoof. The palmar support provides a larger area to distribute the pressure on. So how does the shape of the shoe and the resulting pressure distribution pattern influence the hoof capsule while walking? We can see that the pressure is passed on from the shoe to the hoof on firm ground. The pressure forces at the toe and lateral walls hardly change in comparison to the standard shoe. The surface modification in the form of a palmar bar is situated within the hoof silhouette. On the one hand, it shows only slight differences in the pressure distribution pattern when compared to a standard shoe, but on the other hand, there are pressure peaks visible at the heels, especially during motion, which occur due to the restriction of the hoof mechanism. Apart from that, the frog carries weight as well. The heart bar shoe displays its real effect on soft ground which allows different parts of the hoof to sink in. Here, too, the standard shoe with a rolled toe is used for comparison. When the shod hoof sinks in to its full extent, the entire frog and sole bear weight. Looking at the pressure distribution of a heart bar shoe in deep sand while walking, the following becomes apparent. There are hardly any differences between the shoes at the toe and in the centre part of the hoof. The bar in the palmar part of the hoof becomes clearly visible because it hinders sinking into the ground. This sheet concerns itself with the extent to which the pressure forces are projected from the shoe onto the hoof capsule while walking. The toe can easily sink into the ground because of the shoe's rolled toe so that there are hardly any differences in comparison to a standard shoe in spite of the steeper alignment. There are hardly any differences in the middle part of the hoof when compared to the standard shoe situation. When looking at the posterior part of the hoof, we see that the hoof can't sink into the ground as much as it would do with a standard shoe. There is more counter pressure in this area. Consequently, there are pressure peaks in the heel region. The frog is almost entirely covered by the bar, so that its weight bearing characteristics are similar to the conditions on firm ground. On soft ground, this structure carries more weight with a standard shoe 
however, because the branches and the palmar part of the hoof can sink into the ground deeper and more easily. In conclusion, the frog is included in the weight-bearing process on firm ground by the heart bar shoe's supportive bar. It is not like that with a standard shoe. On soft ground, like sand, the branches usually sink in so that the frog and parts of the sole carry more weight. The protective bar, which prevents the palmar part of the hoof from sinking in, deeply reduces the stress on the frog in comparison to the standard shoe situation. This achieves an even strain on the frog on all types of ground, which is of advantage in illnesses of the palmar hoof region on the one hand. On the other hand, the pressure is transferred increasingly to the heels, so that this region shows significant pressure peaks. The different shoes cause differing amounts of stress between shoe and hoof capsule, to which we have to pay attention when using a heart bar shoe for therapeutic purposes. Particularly the significantly higher strain on the heels, in combination with the restriction of the hoof mechanism, has to be taken into account. The footing pattern is formed out of several steady steps, which are averaged into one picture so that it shows the migration of the centre of force during the main stance phase. For that purpose, the horses were led along a straight line on the different types of ground without distraction or lateral movements of the head. One take was 10 seconds long, with 100 pitches taken per second. During the subsequent analysis with the hoofs off of a mega scan, the first and last step of each take were discarded, so that six to seven steady steps could be evaluated. The average picture shows the footing, the movement during the main stance phase, the unrollment and the point of breakover. When we compare the footing pattern with a standard shoe to the one with a heart bar shoe, there is little effect on the individual footing pattern by this modification, as these three examples show. Summing up, Using a heart bar shoe hoof and coffin bone becomes steeper in relation to the ground in comparison to the standard shoe situation. Based on the biomechanical assumptions of other study groups like Dunois et al, this causes the upper digital bones to descend and the extension of the fetlock joint to increase. The positive effect of the steeper coffin bone angle is the impact it has on the deep digital flexor tendon and the podotrochlear region. The descent of the upper digital bones increases the strain on the suspensory ligaments, the superficial digital flexor tendon and the sesamoidian ligaments on soft ground. The described effects on the alignment of the upper digital bones seem to be highly dependent on the individual conformation of the toe and the whole limb. In addition, the examination of radiographs can only ever be a static snapshot leaving questions about the evaluation of biomechanic effects and the resulting dynamic processes unanswered. Special examinations regarding this point will follow. The heart bar shoe offers an enlargement of the supporting area in the palmar part of the hoof without influencing the leverage forces during motion. The influence of the pressure distribution pattern is significant. Pressure peaks occur regularly at the heels on all types of ground as well. Therefore, it is highly recommendable to add considerable padding underneath the frog in order to redistribute the pressure on this structure when we are aiming at a relief in this region. In addition, the bar offers protection of the frog region and the underlying structures. Depending on the application, homogeneous load on or relief of the frog can be achieved on all types of ground. This has a positive effect on the orthopaedic therapy of illnesses of the palmar part of the hoof. The combination of the palmar support and the point of breakover, which is moved heelwards, offers the possibility to use the heart bar shoe in the therapy of laminitis. When using a shoe modification like this, usually the effects on tendons, ligaments, bones and cartilage, or the modification of dynamic processes, are at the centre of attention. Often the impact on the surrounding hoof capsule takes a back seat. By changing the pressure distribution on the supporting surface, we influence the sensitive blood circulation and the horn architecture significantly. On the whole, all the anatomic structures forming the distal extremity form a close regional and functional relationship. It is safe to assume that relief for one structure causes additional strain on the counterpart, so that the efficacy of a shoe modification has to be evaluated individually in every case.